11. The Handbook of Chemistry and Physics gives solubilities of the following compounds in grams per 100 mils of water. Because these compounds are only slightly soluble, assume that the volumes do not change on dissolution and calculate the solubility product for each. And then we have this example right here. So we have BaSeO4 with a solubility of 0 0.0118 grams per 100 mils of water. And all of this, you know, writing on, writing down, they just want you to calculate the solubility product. And the solubility product, remember, is just a KSP. So we're looking for a KSP uh, value for this compound. Now, a KSP always comes from a balanced equation. So the first thing is, is we have to write the correct balanced equation for this slightly soluble compound. Now, if this is undergoing dissolution, which means that this is dissolving into its uh, aqueous ions, this starts off as a solid. It's an ionic compound. So I have Ba, Se, O4, and it's a KSP that we're trying to solve for, so it's at equilibrium, and it's going to be at equilibrium with its two ions. But the question is, what are these two ions? Well, we could use our, um, you know, the ionic equation that they gave us to find out what the charges are. Now, I see that I have a metal Ba, and then I have a, like, somewhat of a polyatomic ion. I mean, it is a polyatomic ion, but it's not one of the w more well-known polyatomic ions. So the break here would be between the Ba and then the SeO4. Remember, you're only allowed to have two br one break separating it into two ions. You can't have two breaks, all right? So in this case, I have Ba plus the SeO4. But now I know that these are going to be dissociated into its ions, which means that there should be charges in the upper right-hand corner. So this is kind of like a refresher, right, all the way back from, you know, Gen Chem 1, where we made ionic compounds and broke them apart. Keep in mind that there was one barium, and the polyatomic here, there was only one of these. So use those charges, or use the subscripts to crisscross up to see what the charges are. So this one came up here saying that the SeO4 was a minus one charge, and the one up here crisscrosses up telling me that the barium was a plus one. However, barium is in group two on the periodic table. Group twos always want to be a plus two charge, which means that this compound had to be simplified. I'm going to times two to get the plus two, but then I will times two to get the negative two. And those are your actual charges. Now, since I have the charges, these are aqueous, aqueous and aqueous. And remember, this, uh, the ionic compound that you're starting with, the slightly soluble one, that's going to start off as a solid and break down into its ions. Now, just make sure that your equation that you have is balanced, but I'm looking at it and it's balanced, right? I have one BA, one BA, one SeO4, one SeO4, so we're good for the next step. So I'm just going to put this over here for now. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to kind of write out what the general formula for the KSP is. The KSP formula is pretty simple. It just follows any other K, K expression, but it's this one right here. KSPs are only just the concentration of the products raised to the coefficients because the reactants are always going to be solids. And remember, no solids or liquids allowed. So we have KSP equal to the concentration of the two ionic uh, products, Ba2 plus times SeO4 2 minus. Keep in mind that they are raised to their coefficients, but since here they were no numbers in front, that just means that there were one and one. So you can raise them to the first, but anything raised to the first is itself. But now the thing is, is do we know what the concentration of the barium is? And do we know what the concentration of the SeO4 is? Not really, not yet. 
The only thing that we know is that this whole compound was 0 0.0118 grams per 100 mils. Remember, if we're trying to solve for a concentration, we want to find the molarity. And the molarity units are always moles per liter. So I have to convert the grams into moles and the milliliters into liters. So let's just do some back to basics, uh, you know, converting. We love a good conversion. Not really, but it makes the, uh, makes the question go by more pleasantly. <laughs> 0 0.0118 grams of the original compound. So that was the BASEO4. And this is per 100 mils. So just work with one unit at a time. Let's convert the grams into the moles that we need. So times by a ratio. We want to put the grams on the other side, so that goes on the bottom. So grams of Ba, SeO4 goes on the bottom, and moles of uh, Ba, SeO4 goes on the top. A gram to mole conversion is always the periodic table. One mole is always the molar mass on the periodic table, so let's find it out. Let's see, Ba, 137.3 plus 1 selenium, that's 78.97. And then I got 4 oxygens, 4 times 16, so I got 280, 280.27. And now the grams cancel out, and you're just left with the moles. So we have one unit checked. Now we just have to convert the mils to liters. So... This times by another ratio. In this case, we're going to put the milliliters on the top to cancel out the mils. And then we'll put the liters on the bottom. Remember, a thousand mils always equals one liter. And that cancels out milliliters. And now you have the liter. Mole divided by liter is molarity. So let's go for it. 0 0.0118 divided by 100 divided by 280.27 and then times by a thousand. So I get 4.21. I guess that's good enough. Actually, well, I guess we'll put in a zero there. Times 10 to the negative fourth. And that is mole per liter of the original compound, the BASCO4. So that's this one over here. So I have four point. 210 times 10 to the negative fourth. And now I'll just put like capital M. But now how do I go from this molarity to these two uh, ion molarities? That's where the balanced equation comes in and the mole ratios, right? There was one BASEO4 for every one barium ion and then one SEO4 ion. So if they're all the same relationship, one to one to one, the starting molarity would equal the same molarity for the, the barium and then the same molarity for the SeO4. And now we're going to use these two values to plug in to our KSP expression. So KSP equals it's just the two numbers. No need to raise the coefficients here. So 4.210 times 10 to the negative fourth, and then 4.210 times 10 to the negative fourth. Let's figure it out. KSP equals 4.210 times 10 to the negative fourth squared, basically. And 3 sig figs, 1.77 times 10 to the negative seventh. No units on a KSP, and that's the final answer, guys. What do you think? Woohoo! Okay, I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Uh, love talking to you guys. I hope you guys are having a great day. Let's keep working hard, and good luck on your future tests and quizzes. And if you wouldn't mind, please hit the, hit the uh, subscribe button and tell your friends about this cool channel. Thank you so much. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.